I failed the CRCST and it's all your fault. Hey, sterile processing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. In today's video, I wanna talk about the misery of failure. We all at some point in our lives either fail, don't measure up, are rejected, and those can be really difficult feelings to hold. If it hasn't happened to you, one, I don't believe you, and two, just wait, it'll happen. Being rejected or failing can be a lot on the body and too much to bear. And because of that, we tend to move to defense mechanisms in order for our mind and our body to feel better. Some people might numb the pain with emotional numbness or turning to substance use. Some people just internalize that pain and have that inner critic, that itty bitty shitty committee in your head that just treats you horribly. And lastly, what I really want to talk about is the defense mechanism some people use called projection. This is where they project the issue onto someone else in order to shift the blame so they can feel better about themselves. Now, all three of those things I mentioned is the person not taking responsibility for their pain, but I definitely want to emphasize that the shifting with the projection is definitely not taking responsibility. But on top of that, it is projecting that responsibility onto somebody else. Now, believe me, I've been there. When I was in the military, I was passed over for promotion to Sergeant First Class four years in a row. And those promotion boards only happen one time a year. So once you are passed over, you have to wait a whole nother year to be reviewed again. To me, it was humiliating and it felt horrible to be rejected. And instead of taking responsibility for that, I projected that and blamed the military system for that. It took a long time for me to come to terms with that pain. And by a long time, I'm talking like got out of the military and probably eight years after that, before I was finally able to take a true look at myself and say, what did I have responsibility over that caused that rejection or failure? Yes, I did work in some hard positions and I did do some schooling that I was really interested in, not to mention getting my degree. But if I really thought about it, there was a lot of schooling I chose not to do. There was positions I chose not to take because I felt they would be too difficult for me. And I didn't even get my basic certification for my job until like the last year before I got out of the military. And all those decisions that I made added up over time made it so I wasn't as competitive as I should have been for the promotion. I did not get it because I did not earn it. And that was entirely my fault. Now I have received a lot of feedback with the materials I provide, the flashcards and the practice exams, mostly good. And I love hearing that good feedback of people passing their exams and getting their certification. That stuff to me is fantastic. And then I have the other side where people do not pass their exam and they give me the negative feedback about my materials. Now, the funny thing about this is both sides credit me for the responsibility. If someone passes, they credit my materials saying, you helped me pass. You're the reason I passed. If they fail, you're the reason I failed. Your materials are the reason I failed. But I want to be clear, I or my materials are not the reason you pass or fail. Now understand what I'm saying. If you really take the time to study the materials and take the practice exams and use that as feedback to go back and study, that's a different thing. But the materials themselves don't cause you to pass. It is your work ethic and willingness, time and energy that you put into studying that helps you pass. When you pass that exam, it's not because I did anything. It's because you took the time, the energy and the effort and you applied that in the exam. I hope this is making sense. If you fail the exam, it is on you. If you pass the exam, it is still on you. That is all the credit 
for you. And let's be real for a minute. My practice exams and flashcards or flashcards practice exams you get on the internet from like Quizlet or, or wherever you get them, none of these are gonna have the exact same questions and selection of answers that are on the HSPA exam. For one, we don't know those exact questions and answer selections. And two, if we did and we published that, they would shut down the exam because that would be illegal. But there is only a limited amount of information. So as we create these questions, they might sound very similar to a question you'll see on the exam. Even if it was as close to identical as you can get, the answer selection is probably gonna be different. The whole point of practice exams and flashcards is not to give you the exact questions that are on the test. It's to help guide you in the right direction for the materials you need to study to pass the exam. You should be taking those practice exams, figuring out which sections you scored the least in, and then going back to study those sections. And then once you've done some studying and some time in that, come back and retake those practice exams to see where you're at. Now, one more area I want to talk about that I see a lot of issues with the um, certification exams is for people who speak English as a second language. Learning English itself, incredibly difficult for someone who speaks a different language. But then adding all the English terms within the field of sterile processing and surgery, not to include that some of it is Latin, so they're trying to fully understand the English language, which is also mixed with some medical Latin language. That is super confusing. And here's the deal. I am not qualified to help you with language stuff. If you are struggling on the certification exam because it's a language issue where it's difficult to understand what the questions are asking you, that is something that you need to take up with HSPA or CBSPD, and maybe something you need to seek a language professional who can help you with that. At the end of the day, hearing negative feedback sucks, but I get it. A lot of times once those people cool down days later after they've given a horrible review or said some really bad comments, usually they'll come back and apologize and, and say they're sorry, they overreacted, and I understand that. Our emotions can get the best of us, and feeling and sitting in that that feelings of rejection or shame can be intolerable. But at the end of the day, you have to find a way to reason with yourself and hold yourself accountable for the areas that you're truly responsible for. I hope that all makes sense. And I really care about you guys. I want to thank you for watching this video. Any topics or videos you want to see, leave them in the comments down below and I'll work on those. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.